And welcome to WRPV and WRPV Studios. You know, we're blessed to live okay, on the Treasure Coast. And I love Port St. Lucie. And like everything, there's times that come about where we have to figure out who's going to help us run our area. Well, with me is Travis R. Walker. Yes, sir. Make sure I get the middle. Travis R. Walker. <laughs> yes, sir. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, all right. And you're running for? Port St. Lucie City Council District 3. Okay. So... <coughs> You've been on before. You're an attorney. Yes, sir. Okay, so my question to you, like I said to you before we even got on the air, is why? Why would? Why do you want to get into politics? Yeah. Well, in addition to being an attorney, I'm an Eagle Scout, so I've taken two oaths to serve and protect, and so I'm wired to serve, and uh, I actually ran for city council 20 years ago for this same seat. And so, you know, I've always wanted the interest of serving uh, our city, and I wasn't quite old enough at the time. And, but I've matured, I went to college, law school, started my own firm, started my own family, and now I want to give back uh, to the community that I love. Okay, so <clears throat> there are so many issues that happen within a community. Sure. What, like for you, what do you stand on that you want to see change that you have the ability to change? At, in District 3? Sure. I mean, there's really three things. Obviously, uh, fiscal responsibility is a huge thing, making sure that we're using our tax da dollar payers wisely. Uh, I'd love to see us go to rollback rates when it comes to the millage rate to make sure that, you know, we're getting the appropriate amount of tax dollars. The, the city of Port St. Lucie runs on more than a half a billion dollar budget uh, every year. And so we need to make sure that people are, are we're, we're using the tax da dollar pay uh, wisely. Um, second, the environment's a big issue. We have a lot of people who are still on septic. We roughly 12,000. So the more that we can convert people off of septic, uh, because the, the real issue is the affluent that's coming into our estuaries and rivers is, is terrible. And so I want to find ways to find grants and incentives, work with the state and federal uh, lawmakers to find ways that we can get people off of septic and clean up uh, our environment. And three, as, as an attorney, there are no other attorneys on the city council right now, um, but the city legal department is a huge issue. There's been a, a number of termo turnover over the years, uh, and I wanna make sure that we're, we're on top of that. Uh, and, and frankly, the biggest agreement uh, with the city of Port St. Lucie with any of its vendors is its waste hauling franchise agreement, uh, what they have with WastePro. And obviously, that's at the forefront of a lot of our citizens' concerns right now. When I go door to door and I talk to people, the number one issue that comes up again and again is how long is it going to take for Waste Pro to come by and pick up my trash? And you know, it's interesting because <clears throat> for a while there was this perfect scheduling going on, and then all of a sudden it kind of dropped off, and my garbage sits there for two, three days. Yep. The only blessing for me is that I forget to take it out on the day it's supposed to go out, but it's okay because they don't get there for three or four more days. It's <laughs> so I'm okay. ancillary benefit. <laughs> right? Yes. Is, you know, we talk, and I've heard that our we have a high millage rate. Mm -hmm. Is that true? It, it is. It is a higher millage rate, and okay. we definitely, obviously, over the, the the years, the city of Port St. Lucie has incurred debts that, you know, we in hindsight shouldn't have incurred. But you know, we're working to pay those down, and that's part of the millage rate issue. And we're going through a number of changes. I mean, our mayor has left. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and we have a new mayor. Right. Okay. Um, and, uh, I mean, I think it was last year that we had local elections? Correct. Yeah, okay. just last November. Okay. And uh, a bunch of them have been through here. We have some good people in there. Yes. It's time for a change. Okay? Yes, sir. Sometimes just the way it is is not the way it needs to be. Correct. Okay? Correct. And a fresh new look yes. is very, very important. And And I don't care. You know, we're talking politics, but even here, I renovated the space to, for a different look. Sometimes yes. you have to grow. Port St. Lucie is growing in massive numbers. Massively. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes. The most interesting about Port St. Lucie to me is that we're a beach town without access to a beach. True. Okay? And that's, the, that's what I hear most of the time. But people who come to Port St. Lucie love to live in Port St. Lucie. They do. They do. Okay? Yes. Now, that being the case, what about infrastructure within Port St. Lucie? Sure. No, and I think, you know, the, the city of Port St. Lucie has done a great job so far with working uh, to improve the infrastructure. There's a $130 million stormwater project that I would support that the city council is, is moving forward with. There's a McCarty Ranch water treatment process that's going to help clean up our canals. Um, but, you know, when I ran for city council 20 years ago, uh, Eroso Floresta at peak times was incurring F levels of service, and there's certainly F levels of service occurring across the city now, largely because of the amount of growth that we've incurred. We are the 
third largest uh, city in size of land mass and the seventh largest city in size of population. And that's just going to continue to grow because of the amount of growth that is occurring out on the western side of the city. Now, all those entitlements and all of those development rights have already uh, been created, so that growth is coming uh, one, one way or another. And so we just have to plan appropriately and, and be in front of those infrastructure needs. And traffic is, is a huge issue. I think all of us, when we're driving the roads, uh, are, are, are having um, you know, bad traffic at times. Okay. East and west in Port St. Lucie? was a nightmare until we were blessed with Quest Town. Yes. Okay, and that was a blessing. Yes. Again, politics played a big part of it. Sure. Okay, and I'm not an engineer. I think that I would have made some different things. Sure. But that's how that's what makes this world go round. It does. And it's people like you that bring fresh blood to a city. Sure. Okay, and and it needs it. Yes, sir. Okay, politics is something that needs to be adjusted constantly in my opinion agreed is it possible to lower the tax rate it is it is possible to lower the tax rate i mean that's you know i i'm the only candidate in my race who actually runs payroll every two weeks we just ran payroll today it's friday and I, so I have 15 staff members that I pay for pay every two weeks. And so you're constantly looking at ways of cutting costs and finding new ways to be innovative and make things happen when you run your own small business and you run payroll. And so I think we can always find ways to do more with less, whether it's technology or other innovative ways. One of the things that I really believe in is reaching out to other local uh, communities, the state, you know, the national, uh, you know, and just looking for ways to, that other communities are finding other ways to do things. It's, we don't have all the answers here. And that's the one thing that I think I bring to the city council is that I know, knowing what I, knowing that I don't know everything and knowing that I need to go find the answers is a big part of, of being a, an effective city council member. You said something really interesting, and before I let you go, is that other areas have some of the answers that we don't have. Correct. Are you going to go after those ideas and bring them forth to us? Yes. I mean, is that the idea? Yeah. Because I get it. You you can't be the smartest person in the room, otherwise you'll never learn anything. True. So I, I totally, totally get that. All right. The election is, when is the primary? September 21st. Okay. And the election? Uh, it, it's uh, the District 3 City Council race. Port St. Lucie City to Council District 3. Okay. How do people, you have a, a website where they can go and we, we help do. and donate and absolutely. time and money? Yes, absolutely. So I would love everybody to uh, go to votetraviswalker.com. Uh, if you are, are able to provide financial support, that's great. You know, that's the only way these campaigns run. It's it's free speech, and that would be votetraviswalker.com slash donate. You can always call me on my cell, 772-873-7377, 772-873-7377. Or we have a Facebook page, and uh, look us up, Port St. Lucie City Council District 3, Travis Walker. And we'd love to have your support. Okay, so – I want to congratulate you on the great job that you're going to do when you. you win. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Wayne. And I'm glad that you came in. Yes, sir. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. Everybody, he's been in before, before you were thinking about running. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I did your interview and found that it was a great interview. Thank you. And that you were in reality instead of in this fake world that most politicians are in. That's why you're back. Appreciate that. Thank With you. that, everybody, have a great day. Vote Travis R. Walker? Or? Travis, Travis R. Walker, Travis Walker, it's the same. <laughs> and, we'll, and definitely love the vote. You got it. We'll be right back. Thank you so much.